Okay, so welcome everyone. My name is Dr. Lana Repar, and I'm very happy to welcome you to this postgraduate webinar where we are going to talk about this very unique and dynamic NSC in food business and innovation. We prepare some good content for you today. We are going to address most frequently asked questions and you also get a chance to hear from our students who recently finished this program. But before that, I'm happy to introduce our panel today. We have Professor Joe Bogue and we also have Mr. Ronan Farrell. They are two program directors of this NSC and FBI. So before we start, I'm just going to go through the content of the webinar a little bit and also through some housekeeping rules. So in the first part, we are going to introduce the program. We are going to tell you what it is to really be enrolled in this NSC in food business and innovation. Then we are going to hear from our students. Today, we are really happy to have Joanne Cross and Kian Barry all the way from the America and Sydney. They're here with us today. They're two students that recently finished this master's and are now building their careers internationally in the leading multinational companies. We will also have time to answer your questions. So please make sure as you're joining the webinar that you mute your microphone. And if you have any questions at any point of the webinar, please just type them in into the chat box. And towards the end of the session, we are going to be answering those questions. So a uh, great uh, 45 to one hour ahead of us. Uh, so without further ado, let's start. So just to put this MSc in food business and innovation into context, it's probably really good to remember how important global food industry is today. So it's definitely considered one of the top industries in terms of the value. As you can see, the expected market size is one point, it's 8.9 trillion US dollars, and we're going to expect that in the next few years. So it's a huge growing industry with so many different roles appearing every day. There's so many different types of jobs that are actually needed for the modern food industry. But that's not all. If we look at the Irish situation and if we look at the, for example, food and drink exports, last year we had $16.7 billion. And if you couple that with the total Irish agri-export, we had about 18.7 billion euros. So in a nutshell, what we do in this master's program is really we put an emphasis on creating and shaping future leaders who are going to be able to address all of the challenges that this growing food industry is facing and to do that in a very innovative way with sustainability in their mind. So that's a little bit about the program, but we are going to go now into a little bit more depth and you know we get loads of questions about this program. So we are going to give you a little bit more about it. So this program is a one year full program you're going to get the uh, master's uh, title afterwards. And it's also unique because it includes five months placement. You're going to hear later on about the placements and also from our students, what are their experiences with the placement? But also some of the topics that you're going to be listening about if you enroll in this program are, for example, food marketing, digital media marketing, strategic thinking, entrepreneurship, we put a lot of emphasis on to entrepreneurship, innovation, the process of design thinking, all of those skills, soft and hard skills that are wanted by the industry. So it's a very dynamic, very practical, very much hands-on program that we have here. So I'm going to just tell you a little bit about the AACSB accreditation. You probably saw this little sign there on the front slide. Well, that's actually a recognition that as part of the Cork University Business School, this program is accredited. Uh, and according to some statistics, there are around 16,563 schools offering many different business programs. And from that number, it's only 5.7% that actually hold this AACSB accreditation. So that puts us as the Cork University Business School and this MSc in Food Business and Innovation in a very much elite club. As you can see, some of the universities that also hold this accreditation 
or Harvard University, uh, Babson College, Yale, the Penn uh, State University, uh, Cornell, Stanford, uh, lots of universities in the UK as well. So by enrolling in this program and in Cork University Business School, you know that your program is going to be accredited. So I'm going to hand you over now to Professor Joe Bork to tell you a little bit more about this MSc. Okay, thank you, Lana. Uh, I suppose just following up from the accreditation point of view, accreditation is really important because it means what we do is accredited. It means everything we do is about quality. It's, it's basically international standard, which is really important in terms of going out looking for a job or whatever. I suppose in terms of the uh, master's itself, when we designed this master's, we looked towards industry and we talked to industry about what they wanted from our graduates. And we also talked to students themselves, what they saw as the, uh, uh, the key areas that they, they wanted going forward. Uh, we looked at kind of jobs in consumer insights, innovation, branding, supply chain management. All these areas are covered within the master's. And I think one thing that we really looked at was the idea that the skills from this master's are transferable. So although we use food as a vehicle to study, everything is transferable to other areas. And the more we talk to people in industry, the more they look for students who can problem solve. You know, So can you take a certain skill set? And can you apply it to a new learning situation, for example? So you can kind of see there we cover things like consumer research, food marketing, innovation, all applicable to high tech, low tech, to food, to non-food, uh, entrepreneurship, whether you're going to become an entrepreneur or think entrepreneurial or whether you've an entrepreneurship mindset. All these are key in terms of how the graduate faces into industry and aligns his or her ambitions with um, their particular skill set, for example. So. This is kind of the, the template we used in terms of designing this master's, as I say, very much focused on what industry wanted and what our students wanted. So in terms of the structure itself, then we, broke, we break the actual structure down into four particular areas. And, you know, what we've done is we've kind of corralled them into global food systems, for example, which includes things like sustainability, policy issues. Everything now is about sustainability. You know, you, you, we look, this university has become the, uh, a really one of the top sustainable universities in the world, and that's embedded in our, our program, for example. We have a huge focus on entrepreneurship and innovation. You know, can you see innovative opportunities, for example? Uh, what is it like to be an entrepreneur? And we, we study these and, and we'll talk about these later on, for example. We've built in food marketing. So whether you've done marketing before or not done marketing, we'll introduce you to the basics of marketing. But we'll also build up your skill set very quickly in retail marketing, uh, consumer-driven insights, uh, supply chain management, and branding. So these are all key areas that are looked upon by industry. And again, not just food has been really important in terms of global supply chains. You know, So you can fit into logistics, you can fit into the consumer side of branding, you can look at insights, for example. So as I say, everything we've worked on is really designed what industry and, and students want, basically. And the last one there in terms of applications, a food industry-centered research project, which we'll talk about later on. But really, this is you going in on placement into a company and problem solving. So this is the, the, the major structure of the master's, uh, six months on campus and three months out on placement, three to four months on placement. In terms of the timeline, so applications are open now. Uh, they will start uh, the scholarships will start opening on about the 1st of May, for example. We have two Columbia scholarships this year. Uh, and again, students who apply for the program can apply for the Columbia scholarship. Uh, start to semester one is in September. End of semester one is in December. And again, there'll be a few exams at that stage. And then we start semester two in January 2024, which seems a, a long way off at this stage, but it comes around very quickly. End of semester two is March 2024, where there's a certain number of exams and then the placement starts. And again, we have a full structured uh, scaffolded approach towards placement where you work with uh, our dedicated placement officer to identify a placement that aligns with your ambitions. And I'm sure our two uh, graduates here will talk about the placements there on because I think that's a pivotal part of it that you go out in placement with a, a question and you solve that problem or question for an industry. Thanks, um, Joe. Um, just to maybe go into the placement um, aspect in a little bit more depth, um, Joe mentioned there that we have um, 
a dedicated placement um, manager who looks after our students on the program. So essentially, in at the start of semester one, um, we have um, built up, you know, a very very strong collaboration with industry, which um, provides our students with a host of opportunities um, with both indigenous and the top international food businesses um, and non food businesses. Um, you know, with a range of opportunities for students um, to go out um, in the third trimester. Um, so that um, commences in semester one and um, the whole process. Um, and then the students go out on placement um, in industry, um, as Joe mentioned, to solve, um, you know, problems um, within those different organizations where they um, where they find their placement. Um, and that then is culminates um, in a research project, which is presented as part of your final assessment um, in August. So the placement typically goes from March until August at the end of um, semester two. Um, I suppose it's a great opportunity to, um, number one, um, I suppose, explore areas of industry that you might like to work in, but also to, um, to put the skills and um, new, um, I suppose, um, I suppose skill sets that you've learned and um, during the program into um, practical application um, in industry. Um, just in terms of the type of placement roles that um, students can expect to get, um, you know, across the board, and um, there's roles in marketing, communications, marketing, and sales. Um, online and digital has become really important. And many of our graduates go working in. Um, the large supermarket and um, changing their corporate head offices, looking after own brands, future brands. Um, new product development, um, the commercial side of purchasing, um, and so on. And then other areas are supply chain sustainability has become really important, um, you know, across the entire food industry and probably one of the biggest challenges facing um, industry. And that's something that's of interest to more and more companies and more and more companies are coming looking for students that have a skill set in, in that space. And then other students um, who use this program to convert um, and build their vocabulary um, of the food industry go into production and that might come across in a position in quality operation supply chain. Um, and then more recently, some of the big um, financial firms have um, really expanded their portfolio of consulting services. And they're coming to us looking for students with specific skill sets and um, that um, they can um, service their clients' needs with. So people like Grant Thornton, KPMG, Deloitte and Touche would, um, you know, would be recruiting in that space. In terms of where our graduates go, um, we're very, very proud of the achievements of our students um, year after year. Um, and in the last number of years, more and more of our students are going into some of the biggest um, globalized, um, not just food companies, but, um, you know, um, the largest food companies in the world. And then non-food companies, places like Apple, TikTok, um, a lot of students go into the pharmaceutical sector because, again, the skill set in food is very transfer or the skill set from the program where there's a concentration on food is very, very transferable into other industries. Um, again, our large um, international and global um, domestic based um, food organizations such as Kerry or Nua Glanbia and um, Enterprise Ireland um, who um, support the food industry, you know, they're all represented um, in terms of where our graduates go. And then some students prefer to, you know, work here in the Irish market. And there's lots of opportunities which um, come to the fore with um, Irish, um, with Irish companies. Um, and what we find is that our students are performing very, very well. And they're very well prepared when they get to this stage where they're going either on graduate programs or going into full-time positions. And in fact, many of the placement um, roles convert into full-time positions for the students, which is a great um, benefit of the, um, the placement program. And again, testament to the skills that the students acquire, um, you know, during their time um, here on the program with us. Um, so in terms of what our graduates are doing, you know, roles like marketing manager, global um, communications, design, science, science and innovation. We've had students that have really um, enjoyed the entrepreneurship side um, and have gone on to set up their own businesses or have started down that road. Um, and, you know, we've been able to thankfully um, extend other supports within the university to support those um, students on that journey beyond the program, which is um, very, very interesting for us to see that path 
way out of the program and also to see the development of those students as they progress. Um, and many of the roles are, as we said, you know, our students are, are alumni for the program are um, spread all over the world at this stage. Um, and um, it's really nice to touch in and see what types of jobs the students are getting um, into and how the program has helped them to accelerate um, into their careers. And um, Kian and Joanne will talk to us a little bit um, about that um, in a couple of moments. Um, so just in terms of um, the scholarship, which um, both Joe and Lana mentioned, um, we're, that will be open um, from the start of May um, and students who have applied and accepted an offer for the program can um, can apply for that scholarship. Um, and um, again, we'd strongly recommend anybody who's interested in the program um, to make um, that application um, and that's reviewed then over the subsequent months. Um, you know, there's an interview process with the company and so on, and then the scholarships are awarded. So there'll be two scholarships um, again um, this year. So if I if I can just add to the Glambia thing. So yep. we're very lucky to have Glambia supporting uh, these particular scholarships as Ronan mentioned. Glambi is a world-renowned organization in um, athlete nutrition, for example, headquartered in Ireland, but they now have uh, head, they have uh, units all over the world based, I think, in about 180 countries. They have, out of 180 countries, they have about 150 units in different areas. Huge in, in as I say, in athlete nutrition, uh, very much diversified. And what they've done is by supporting the masters, they've really uh, kept faith in what we do. Uh, and this particular scholarship is two scholarships, as Rowan says, opening at the beginning of May. Uh, and we'll be offering uh, places on the program on a rolling basis. So you have to have applied for the program then to apply for the Glambia scholarship. So you can go on to the next slide, Lana. So this is the application process itself. Uh, you can see we offer on a rolling basis. So certainly by, you know, by different dates, we'll offer straight away. So we're doing that at the moment in terms of the application application process. The non-EU closing date is the 30th of June and the EU closing date is around the end of August, basically 2023. And you can see that, as I say, once we get full applications in, we'll offer places or conditional places based on uh, whether the students re meet requirements or not, for example. And you can see in terms on the right hand side there, you have the code and you have the application process, basically. Um, and again, if anybody wants to email, we leave our emails at the very end. You can email Lana, Ron, and myself, and we can answer any queries in terms of eligibility, uh, scores in terms of language uh, proficiency, that sort of thing. Okay, so um, I suppose a key part of all programs now in the university um, is student engagement and the student experience. Um, and we work very hard on integrating our students um, as soon as they come on campus and um, particularly into our own program. So with students coming from, you know, many, many different backgrounds in their undergraduate, and it's very important that, um, you know, they knit as a group very, very quickly because there's a lot of group work involved in a lot of the modules um, from the outset. So um, I suppose we deliver this um, in many different ways. Um, you know, we've organized coffee mornings and um, Cubs host a number of events um, for the onboarding of students. And um, I suppose it's easier for students from um, who might be coming from other programs within the university, but certainly students that are coming to UCC for the first time. And this is a key part. Class debates, master classes. We bring a lot of people in from industry to speak to the students and um, to give them some um, sight of the pathways and the opportunities that are um, available to them um, after the programme. We do lots of showcases last and um, just um, as late as yesterday, this year's group were presenting their um, entrepreneurship projects in a dragon's den. Um, and if any of you are online um, or on LinkedIn this morning, um, you'll see that um, that's being promoted um, widely. Um, so the digital art Student experience is a real um, key part of this. Um, some of the events that we've run in the past um, have been very closely tied with partners in industry. And um, we've run different challenges where companies come in with a particular problem and the students are set um, about um, resolving that for the company. This might be in the space of innovation, coming up with a new digital or marketing campaign um, and so on. And then there's lots of different competitions with our own um, um, business idea challenge, which is centered on the entrepreneurship module. And we also have university wide um, entrepreneurship competitions, which we support the students to um, engage in um, throughout um, their time here with us on the program. Thanks, Lana. 
So it's very interesting to see where our students are coming from. For this program, you don't have to have a business background. We see students coming from everywhere, from, for example, food sciences, uh, the nutritional sciences, from big comp, from arts, education, a really, really broad spectrum. For example, here we have Madeline and her background is in food science. And the reason why she really loved this program is because of the research project and placement are combined together. We also had Stephen, for example, Stephen uh, is a recent BCom student who joined our program and both Madeline and Stephen were awarded this amazing uh, Glambia Excellence Scholarship. And then actually they both ended up working for the company, which is really great pathway for our students. And Stephen really liked the business skill. He loved to emphasize that when he was going for job interview. Rachel had a very interesting story. She also had a big home background and then she went to work in London in the banking sector for three years, but she always knew she loves food. So she wanted to do a program that is going to help her to steer her in the desired career direction. And she came on to our program and now she's working uh, as a marketing specialist. We get lots of international students as well and their mindset and perspectives are really important. For example, Sancho, who after the uh, MSc in FBI started uh, thinking about his own business uh, to develop new products that were going to be very much sustainable. He loved this entrepreneurial and innovation part of the program. And also uh, Sumit, very interesting uh, student. He said himself that he was looking for a program for quite some time that is going to combine what the industry wants and the application of that learned knowledge. He also enjoyed this program. And also we always hear stories and read in the newspapers how our students you know, came from different backgrounds, did our masters, and then actually that led to their first job. Here we have an example of Zoe, who is a trainee buyer with little. Again, emphasize the importance uh, of you know, choosing the program that gave her the placement, which is this MSc in FBI. Also from a practical point of view, Richard, for example, uh, he, is, uh, he came to us from MTU and uh, we, he wanted to do something new. He wants to be innovative, so he used his placement to actually come up with a new product. So you can see from his research project right there to Don Stores, a very special edition, uh, he came up with a crab cocktail. So he was able to come up with a product, innovate, apply all of the learning skills that he was listening to and practicing during two semesters and placement to actually come up with something that is very practical. Over to you, Ronan. Maybe, well, Roland is uh, maybe muted or un uh, unmuted. I'm just sorry, Lana. And um, yeah. the Food Innovation Challenge um, is um, a project that the students work on in groups um, across semester one and semester two, and that's culminating then in the Dragon's Den. Um, that part of the programme, it's a milestone really because it brings together all the different um, elements of the programme that the students work on in, um, you know, in digital marketing, supply chain, um, retail management, category management, um, strategic food marketing, um, and so on. So the students have to come up with their own idea for a new food related um, business. They have to do secondary market research. They have to apply for ethical approval to do primary market research and develop the insights and um, to support their business case. Um, and that's then delivered um, in a in a Dragon's Den format where they pitch to a panel of judges um, externally, which might be composed of people from Enterprise Ireland, the local enterprise office and other um, entrepreneurship related um, support services um, in um, the local economy here in Cork. Um, so the students love that. And I suppose over the course of semester one um, and into semester two, you know, they're pra practicing their pitching skills, their presentation skills, their report writing skills and this and um, part of the um, program brings all of that together. Two really important elements in the program are practice based education. So you don't need to have a business background to come into um, this program, which is a very important point to make. So what we do is we deliver um, and we teach um, the theories, but then we um, really focus on how the students can apply those in um, either applied or real world um, business um, 
environments. And that's delivered then through working on case studies in class, um, visits to businesses, team building challenges, design thinking, master classes where we bring people in from outside um, to talk to the students, role played scenarios, brainstorming ideas. So there's a whole selection of that um, right across the program. And then obviously food innovation and entrepreneurship is a key um, part of the program. And as Joe mentioned earlier, um, companies are looking for students now that can identify and solve problems and um, because the world is changing very very rapidly and you know companies need to be really focused on this innovation piece and a cornerstone of that is you know thinking sustainably and how we can and um, build sustainable businesses into the future so that's a really important and um, part of that and what we find with our graduates is that companies are um, looking for um, students that are entrepreneurial that can solve these problems that have the skill set the design thinking, the ability to take a problem, research it and come back with um, a viable set of solutions that the company can um, work on. And, you know, that's, I suppose, a core element of um, how we um, how we deliver the programme. Um, just in terms of the applied food industry research um, part of the programme, which is tied to the placement. Um, so we organise the placements through the um, careers office um, and we have a dedicated placement manager. And as the students go out onto their placement, um, they either work on a project that um, we work on here in the university or else they're solving a problem um, in a project based environment for the company on their um, on their placement. Um, so again, that um, requires research, it requires report writing, um, and that's the final piece of assessment that's submitted at the end of semester three. So the students work on that applied um, food industry centred research project throughout trimester three, which typically starts in March um, and finishes um, on the last week um, in August, where the students hand in their, um, their projects um, and I suppose essentially then you're graduating um, after that. So it's a cornerstone um, of the um, of the programme. And again, it's um, bringing together all of the skills that you've learned throughout the programme. And, um, you know, I suppose it's helping people to, well, I suppose you're solving problems in industry and then you're bringing that back to um, the companies in a very, very structured fashion and um, following a very, very rigorous process in terms of how you solve the problem um, and so on. Thank you, Ronan. So basically what we are kind of like looking for to kind of like shape into our graduates is the individuals that are knowledgeable, that think sustainably, that are innovative, creative, that think globally as well. They can resolve many different problems. The individuals that are agile, that also are curious and compassionate, and they are uh, able to lead in resolving some challenges in the global food, in food industry. We also put a lot of emphasis on teamwork and getting you to understand how you can get the best out of the team and to optimize each person's uh, abilities. So uh, in order to get in touch with us, we are going to leave the email addresses. We're also going to put them into the chat box. You can also scan a QR code that is going to guide you directly to the MSc in Food Business and Innovation Program. Loads of information is out there. So I'm going to hand it over to Joe to wrap this first part of the webinar. Yeah, so I think there's a lot of information to, there to digest. I think listen to the students. Now, the graduate is the key. The graduates is the key thing. One in Australia and one in the United States. So we have a nice international dimension to, to it, basically. Uh, when I was tasked with designing this program about five years ago, we've had a huge number of students go through, graduate in, in great positions, which is wonderful to see. I suppose the key things that come across about the program, like it's a unique program. There's nothing like this uh, across any of the business schools. Because in a, in a very unique environment, we're a business school with a food area on it, like with very research active staff uh, and staff who are engaged in a lot of what they do here, which you need to know research an area if you're going to teach it. So I think that works very well. Uh, so that's the first thing it's unique. Second, it's employment focused. I always wanted a program that you didn't have to go and do other education afterwards, that when you did it, you're straight into a job afterwards. And that has worked you know, where students are very sought after by industry. And I think that's worked very well. Number three is a great blend of modules. So we really worked at designing modules that fit together, like digital media marketing, the metaverse. We're well ahead of our time there. We have experts in supply chain, retail marketing, strategic marketing, all these different areas. And again, I think it's food and it's non-food, which I think is very important. And the teaching techniques we use are different. We're bringing simulation games in this year where 
We're going to teach somebody entrepreneurship via virtual uh, games, for example. And, and that really is cutting edge in terms of what we're doing. We also are doing a lot of uh, projects, a lot of um, challenges, boot camps, for example. The, other, the last thing I think it's, it's taught in a fun environment. I'm, I'm not sure if the graduates would agree with that, but we try to make it fun in some ways, but it's challenging. Like this is a, a tough master's, but it's challenging and very rewarding. And we like to build a nice camaraderie amongst our students. Because we're a small department within a business school, we get to know our students very well. So we're, we're, you know, we know them in terms of giving them references, that sort of thing. So that's important. And it's also international. So we have a nice international dimension to projects, which I think is important. So I think going back to Lana, let's listen maybe and hear what some of the graduates have to say. Definitely. And uh, first, I would like to uh, welcome Joanne Cross. Now, uh, Joanne uh, finished the program uh, in uh, 2020 and now is an account executive at Ferrero Australia. Joining us from Sydney, uh, Joanne, over to you. Tell us a little bit about your background and your experiences with this MSc in Food Business and Innovation. Yeah, thanks, Anna. Um... So I didn't have a business background when I joined the MSc for Business Innovation. I studied Irish and Spanish in UL for four years. Um, I thought I wanted to go teaching, but quickly realised I didn't. Um, I applied then for this course because the food industry is such a big part of the Irish economy and globally, and then there's no barriers to entering either. So that was a big um, factor in the plan. And then the course is brilliant. You learn so much from supply chain to sales, marketing, category, quality, everything. Um, your skills are transferable and you're extremely employable. Um, probably the best part of the course for me was the business plan or the innovation challenge. You get to learn from scratch how businesses are made and it's good fun as well. You're in the same group with the same people for the full year and you become great friends with them. Um, unfortunately, my year was the first year that got hit by COVID, so I couldn't go on placement. Um, I had secure placement with Columbia in supply chain, but instead we focused on our research project with our supervisors. So Ronan was my supervisor that year. Um, and then I ended up getting a job in marketing after that. So I worked in sales, I worked in marketing, and I could have worked in supply chain. So it's a great course to be employed. That's an amazing story and thank you so much, Joanne. So can you tell us uh, a little bit more about your current role? So what are you working on at the moment and what are the most exciting parts of that role? Um, so at the minute, I'm a national account executive in Ferrero. We're based in North Sydney. Um, every day is different. So you could go from range of views to promotional planning, forecasting, CPI, so price increases, which are always fun. Um, you work really closely with like the um, commercial director, the national business manager, and just to develop and build the relationship with the customer. So my customer is IGA, um, the independent stores in Australia. Um, Best bit is every day is different and the free chocolate helps as well. <laughs> That's fantastic. I wouldn't mind that. And <laughs> if you if you kind of like had to list maybe kind of the three most important skills that are needed for the role, um, what would you say those skills are? Uh, the main one would probably be communication because you need to build a relationship with your customer and you need to be able to clearly communicate the good and the bad effectively. Um, after that, probably organisational skills, you need deadlines to meet, you need targets to meet and you need to do that. And then lastly, analytical or problem solving. So you need to be able to solve problems for your customer identify gaps in the market and so on. So they're the three skills for anyone going into sales. That's really interesting. And I'm sure 
uh, that Joe and Ronan would agree with me and we could discuss this a little bit later. Those are the things actually that we emphasize so much in this MSC FBI. So all of those communication, organizational, analytical skills. So uh, it, it's great to know that you consider those three skills as the most important ones. So I'm going to go back to you, Joanne, uh, just a little bit later. And I would like to welcome from the other side of the world, our uh, student uh, that finished with us in uh, 2021. We have Kian Berry here and uh, his role is a supply chain specialist at Red Bull North America. So over to you, Kian, tell us a little bit about your background and also your experiences with the MSC FBI. Thanks, Lena. Um, I was a similar. I had no uh, business background um, when I joined the Masters. I had just graduated as a microbiologist from UCC. So I decided I didn't want to work in a lab for the rest of my life. So I wanted to do a master that would help me transition into business. And I really researched this master's. And what I found was really attractive about it was that it was industry focused. And it was, as Joe said and Ronan said, like about your fo the focus is being employable at the end of it. And I found that was the case during the master's. Um, there's a lot of, like I went into this master's without even knowing what supply chain was really. Um, I know I'm, you know, a year and a half, two years down the line, I'm a specialist in it. So you go in and it's, I think the main attractive, the main attraction of it was the industry focus. You're dealing with people like lecturers, guest lecturers, everyone has a foot in the industry. So it's not just hearsay, it's actual like relative knowledge that you need to have. And I think you learn a lot of skills in the masters that are transferable. Like for example, through category management, um, learn a lot of skills on Excel, uh, analytical skills. You you learn a lot through. I mean, my it's piqued my interest when I did the um, supply chain management module, um, and I think the food entrepreneurship um, module. Where you get to work with your team throughout the year, building your own idea from scratch, which I think is important whether you start your own business or go into a large company, because you can be handed a project. Um, particularly in supply chain and you have to think outside the box you have to think kind of like an entrepreneur within the company um, to be able to um, to be able to solve those problems you're given so yeah, I had a fantastic experience with this unfortunately I was one of the years with COVID but I still you know got as much out of it I think as anyone would so um, I can only say it'd probably be even better um, without COVID but uh, I really enjoyed it made a lot of very close friends still in contact with them and I learned a lot that I could actually I felt I could transfer um, straight into a role so I went from uh, I was doing placement in permanent TSP but I was lucky enough to get offered a role in Pepsi during that time so I took that and literally I went in the door and I was able to transfer skills I learned in the masters which I didn't have before because I was in science and um, you know I took it from there and eventually got over to here to LA to Red Bull that's really equally amazing story and thank you for that Kian. So I'm sure uh, our uh, students that are potentially joining the MSC FBI and are listening, they want to know what is your current role? So, so what do you do? What is the most exciting part of uh, being in, in LA and working for such a big, big global company? Um, so my current role at the moment is I'm a supply chain specialist for the point of sale after sales team in Red Bull and their headquarters in Santa Monica. So that means basically is I coordinate the every cooler in the 50 states of America, you see in targets, you see in convenience stores, if they need to be repaired, if they need to be moved from warehouse um, to another warehouse or to a different location. So essentially I'm in charge of every single cooler in America, which is um, a lot of volume, um, but it's it's very interesting at the same time. Uh, I get to deal with a lot of vendors. Um, I got to deal with, uh, with different teams throughout Red Bull. So I'm not just stuck in my own lane. I get to deal with other people uh, from other backgrounds and in other, um, areas of the business uh, I think the most exciting part is probably uh, I get to travel a lot with it I get to travel around America so I'll go from LA to Portland to Boston to Seattle to you know meet with vendors contract negotiations with those vendors because we have a lot of them and they obviously we have a lot of volume with coolers so and with Red Bull as well I mean it's a really cool culture so they get to bring you to you know certain events you get tickets to all these extreme events whatever they're trying to do or as you can get tickets to um screenings of new documentaries on netflix or you know um you can even end up at a, an nba game in la or um a hockey game so it's it's really exciting the work is, is interesting um but i think the, the main attraction of the company is just the how 
big they are throughout the world and uh uh the um the travel involved as well i think was really attractive for me that seems fantastic it's a great company culture so again kind of like the same question to you like if you had to kind of like think and select the three most important skills for your particular role what would those skills be uh, i think the most important would be being able to solve problems um i mean supply chain you get thrown a different problem every five minutes so you need to be able to adapt really well act like an entrepreneur in your own role um, I do think you need to be able to com communicate really well because you have to communicate with so many different people who have like, you know, varying levels of knowledge and what you're on about. So like I could go from talking to my senior manager who knows exactly what I'm talking about or to a vendor who wouldn't have as much knowledge. They have their own little niche to someone in, you know, a sales rep or all these kind of different people. So I think communication is really important. Problem solving is probably the most important. And I think being able to work in a team is underrated i think um and i think a lot of companies when i've interviewed for a few companies obviously worked at pepsi and i'm working in red bull now and they they like to know that you can work well in a team and i think you learn a lot of that in the masters as well throughout the modules you're doing the projects you do a lot of it is group based and like that it's just you know it's it's tough at times but like being able to go from that and being able to transfer that into the industry is really important because you can't get anything done on your own in in, in these um environments at the moment you know that's that's definitely true and very interesting. Maybe now in this interactive part, maybe Joe, you have a question or a comment for both Joanne and Kian. Well, I suppose I just comment. It's great to see the international aspect, I think, which is great. Um, you know, I think there's so many masters out there and it's really picking the right one, which Kian said is very important. Um, you know, I think when we're trying to design a master's, it's so difficult sometimes because you really have to think about the range of students you have, for example, we, we try to do a lot of different teaching techniques. We try to think about the, the student themselves. I suppose the one question I would have to Joanne and maybe Kian would be, what are the personal skills you learned? Or how did you develop as a person on the program? Uh, and did you feel that you were part of a team with ourselves? Like, did you feel you got to know us? You know, because one of the problems I think, and maybe you might have when you're in a, in a class, you're in a very big class in certain programs, whereas I think in this, we try to break it down into units. So how did you develop as a person, maybe to, to Joanne first, maybe? Uh, so the course, the year I did it, it was 50% international students, 50% um, Irish students. So everyone has a different way of learning and different way of doing things. So personally, I developed how to understand how different people learn, how to work in a group with different people, and then just as a team, I some of my, my best friends have come from the course that year. And as from the department, like your door was always open, probably too much sometimes. You probably wish we didn't come in as much, but you were always there to help us. And if we need if we needed something answered, we could just come and knock on the door. Yeah. And I think that's why we've developed a kind of a nice alumnus of ex-students, which is great because, you know, when I'm looking at LinkedIn, I can see where the students are going up the managerial ladder. I think there's a, a question there for one of the students about, you know, your experience after a couple of years. We, we would imagine in the next three or four or five years out of college, you would get to the managerial level, you know, because you should have the skill set as opposed to doing something just on supply chain. We've made it a little bit broader, basically. How about you, Kian? personal development? Um, yeah, I think throughout the Masters, I think I went from the only teams I'd ever worked on were in sport. And I think it's slightly different when you work in business. Um, I think as well, working with yourselves, I think um, the fact that it was so hands-on for me, I learned a lot of that, or a lot about that. And, you know, paying it forward that I learned that through the masters. But I think just being able to, you know, understand who you're dealing with, when you're dealing with them, how to, you know, everyone's different. You can, like some people, particularly if you're in one of those projects, say in one of those modules in the masters, how to get the best out of someone who's from a completely different background, who hasn't played sport. If you played sports, they react differently. Um, and I think that's really important as well. I brought that into, into the industry with me as well, because, I mean, you're meeting people from all different countries, different backgrounds, and understanding how to lead a team or be part of a team that um, where everyone's thinking differently. You know, it's, it's, I really learned that um, in the Masters, which I didn't really have. I was kind of had a certain focus and, in teamwork and I was through sport but I think it was really important to learn it um, from a business perspective as well yeah thank you very much and again 
there's another question there about the size of the class. We take on uh, between 40 and 70 each year, about that, around that number, basically. I think your year was, was there a bigger year? Your year, I think it was 90, was there 90 students a year you did it? Yeah, that was the COVID yeah. year, I think, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, you know, generally it's between 40 and 70 students in around that. No, just a question came in about the size of the class. So we are recruiting at the moment and that'll, you know, um, we'll offer places on a rolling basis. Yeah. So Lana, back to you. Definitely. And I think one of the questions here was about the uh, kind of like the uh, job positions in non food sectors. I think we had that in one of the slides. So we see a lot of our students actually taking up uh, uh, social or digital media marketing positions in non food uh, kind of like uh, industries. And uh, for example, I teach digital media marketing, where uh, I'm sure Akian and Joanne experience where you actually have to develop a true kind of like social media campaign from start to finish. So uh, this is one of the reasons I would assume why a lot of our students actually go in that direction, because as we heard today, you get a really practical knowledge. Uh, you know, also, uh, as we saw in the slides, our students are joining, uh, you know, many different companies from the banking sector, finance and accounting, and also pharmaceutical, because I think if I combine everything that uh, Joanne and Kian said, it's all about communication, you know, analytics, working uh, in a team and making sure that you understand how different individuals work and how you can really optimize. And um, also we introduced these years as well, a little bit more about the pitching. So the communication that is kind of like really important, whether you're pitching a new business idea or if you're pitching yourself in an interview. So that's why I believe our graduate has such a huge scope of different positions that they go for and are successful after the MSc and FBI. So another question maybe for uh, Joanne and uh, Kian. So uh, we obviously have uh, the audience uh, here. So you've been through the system a little bit. So you graduated, you went through several interviews, I would say. So what do you think the kind of like industry is looking for in new graduates? And what should our prosperous, uh, prospective students pay attention to when they're actually, for example, enrolled in the program because I know sometimes students go back and say oh if I only paid a little bit more attention in this module like I would I would got this job like much more easily so what do you think the key skills are that the industry is looking for and if you kind of like relate that in one or the two modules that the MSc is actually providing um just from my side I think employers really just want to see someone who's enthusiastic and will get stuck in um, don't be afraid to ask questions. You're not expected to be an expert on, in your first job and making mistakes is okay. Um, that relates back to the course because it was such a practical course and interactive. You had to get stuck in and you had to ask questions and we all made mistakes, but there's people there to correct them for us. Um, yeah, I think I, from my experience, within, in my interviewing experience, I think the main thing uh, they looked for was just someone who they thought could fit the culture and who could be a good team team player like would fit could, could work easily with um as well as that like they obviously look for first that you can do the job they're asking you to do um uh, like analytical skills everything like that and I think you can give in interviews after this um master you can give like real life examples of how you can do the job they're asking you to do um, but I think the main thing, and you learn this a lot, particularly in the teamwork that you do and the group work you do in the masters, is they look for people who will fit in well in the in the team they're hiring you for in the company uh, long term. They don't want to just hire someone who can who might be able to do the job but won't get on and will ruffle feathers inside there in a bad way. Um, so I think yeah, I think you learn through the masters. You'll learn how to work in a team, fit into a culture. And um, you'll be able to give real life examples of how you'll be able to do the job they're asking. That's great, uh, in all fairness. And I noticed one of the questions was uh, about kind of like a starting salary. So maybe rolling over to you from that kind of like industry perspective, like what can, you know, approximately, you know, of course, uh, the uh, fresh uh, graduates from this master's, what they can expect in terms of the salaries roughly? Yeah. Yeah, um, so um, thanks, um, Joanne and Kian. There's some fantastic insights and um, it's great to see your progress, you know, so quickly after graduating. And 
um, you know, I suppose the way I suppose to see where the program has brought you in such a short space of time is, I guess, is very closely aligned to what we're hoping to deliver for students um, all the time. Um, and it's interesting, you know, both of you coming from a non-food background and being able to, you know, carve out um, a career now in areas that you're really interested in and happy in. And um, I suppose we'd wish you all the best with that. Just in terms of, um, of students coming through the program, um, you know, in terms of um, starting salaries, um, it ranges um, by role, um, obviously enough, Lana, but um, typically students could be, you know, expecting to get um, from, I suppose, the late 20s right up into, um, you know, the, the mid to late 30s, you know, for starting roles, which um, is, you know, very, which is very, very much equivalent to, um, you know, where they would be if they had actually spent the time um, working. What's interesting and um, what we're seeing coming through from companies now, which is kind of a new development where um, companies would have always maybe looked for work experience from students. But I think the way master's programs are structured now, they realize that they're getting um, a student with a completely different set of focused skills that can be applied within the workplace and they're putting a value on that. Um, and in the past where they might have, um, you know, looked for students with maybe a year or two years experience, they're now saying that, but also they'll accept students straight out of master's programs and give it the same equivalence, which is a fantastic development. Um, because, you know, that might be something that people would be, you know, students would be considering if I do a master's, you know, am I losing out on a year and um, working and is that going to compromise me in terms of salary? And the, the reality of that um, anymore is that that's not the case. Stu you know, companies are looking for students that have, I suppose, acquired all of the skill sets that, you know, we'll say Kean and Joanne, for example, have um, acquired because um, it really helps the, the companies to propel and, you know, put really well qualified and um, capable students into key positions within their organizations. And that's what we see more and more coming from industry. Um, looking for um, for that and they're being rewarded and we've had students that have had you know started on higher salaries and um, in certain sectors and um, you know the retail sector has been you know very very um, heavily involved um, you know with um, employing students from the program over the last number of years and um, going from placement into um, graduate roles and graduate programs and um, and you know they've all you know they've all achieved very very um, you know very very good salaries um, in those starting positions within those companies you know thank you Ronan. that that's right. great joe maybe over to you as well on that question uh yeah i mean i think it depends on the student obviously their prior experience uh it also depends on what sector they're going into if you're going to financial services it might be more for example in the retail it might be more than manufacturing so but i, I think what we're seeing from you know, following our students on LinkedIn and places like that, and also personal anecdotes with them, we're, we're hearing uh, like that they're moving up through the ranks quite quickly, which is great to see. So I saw one or two students at the moment going from kind of a brand assistant to a brand manager to a category man, you know, the, that sort of thing. So that's where you might start at a base salary, but you're moving up to the ranks, basically. But the other thing I would say is the salary, you know, could be, you know, the sky's the limit as well because we build entrepreneurship into it. So, you know, are you the next Elon Musk or are you the next, uh, you know, uh, Bill Gates or whatever? Because again, we do encourage students to set up their own businesses. And again, there are a lot of opportunities there. Uh, we give a lot of support to entrepreneurs. So uh, again, I think it does depend. I think Joanne and Kian would agree with that. It really depends where you are. You know, I think a year or two in, you might be at a certain level and then hopefully rise, you're looking at other opportunities. But you know, one of the problems is often students don't have the experience on their CV, and I think our placement gives them that experience just to get you in the door. And with a lot of internships, I see students stay with the companies. You know, they if they like the, the cut of the student, if the relationship is working, they'll hold on to the students. Uh, and I think that's a very important uh, validation of the program. Definitely. And I think uh, uh, Joanne and Kian can can comment on that as well. But I'm just going to, you know, address there is one question uh, that was uh, directly to Kian and Joanne. And it's kind of like uh, the student is asking, what was your experience at UCC? So can you tell us a little bit about, you know, the whole experience of being at UCC, student life, you know, studying like all the facilities that you <laughs> used and so on? Um, so I did my undergraduate in UL, so it was my first year in UCC. 
and it was by far my favorite year of college the campus is lovely it's really in close proximity to each other so everyone is close by lecturers are really friendly um, you make some of your best friends in the course if you're into sport it has one of the best gyms in Ireland and some of the best teams as well you can try AFL if you want or rugby um, yeah it's great you love it there yeah I was lucky enough to do my uh, undergrad and my master's in UCC so I spent a lot of time there I played rugby for the college as well um, yeah I couldn't say enough about the college itself um, I didn't have a bad experience with any um, faculty member there um, it's the kind of it goes through the whole college everyone's kind of hands on they want to help you succeed um, and I think the campus itself is obviously beautiful and the library um, you'll spend a bit of time there probably but uh, as um, Joanne said the, the Mardike is world class um, there's, and there's so much going on as well if you're on campus um, like I would be really excited if I was applying for this master's being on campus doing all the group work and going to lectures there's um, I couldn't say enough about the place. I probably had the best four or five years I've had now uh, there and when I was growing up. So, um, yeah, I'd really recommend it as a place to study. Thanks, Kian and Joanne. I think that's really important because, you know, obviously if you, your academic studies are really important, but also the environment you're doing it in. And I think the university tries to that. It's, it's a nice environment where Second City, which is always very good because... Uh, it's, it's a bit more laid back maybe than Dublin or someplace like that. The university itself is, you know, very big on sustainability and very big, really, really big on the student experience, which I've noticed over the last five, six years. We take that very seriously in terms of supports for our students, anything from their welfare to accommodation to employment. All these sort of things are very, very uh, key to what we do. Um, I see a student coming on there talking. I'm a food technology graduate and will be a student of FBI in September 23. Congratulations on a great selection. Uh, however, my question is, will I be able to switch my field of management? Well, I think Kian has answered that because he was a microbiologist and now he's in the business side. My own background is in food science as well, but I'm in management now. So it, it is possible to do that. Uh, and again, you know, one of the students last year who was the top student in the class, one of the top students last year uh, who featured on the thing there, Madeline, She's, she's a food science graduate and she came number one in the class. So she transitioned from science into um, the business side seamlessly, basically. And I think, Joanne, you were saying you're Irish, you have a background in Irish. And what was your second economics, is it? Uh, Spanish. Spanish and Irish. So if you go from Spanish and Irish into, you know, working in Sydney with Ferrero, how good is that? And I think Joanne and Keen are good examples because it shows you you can transition and i think this this ma master's really what we try to focus is on what do you want out of it and again not to repeat myself when we designed it we always thought there was you wouldn't need to do do more education after this now i know they talk about lifelong education but what i mean is going into employment basically you know so back to you lana Thank you so much. And uh, just looking at the time, I, I think you're kind of like now closing to the uh, the kind of like end of this webinar. And I would really love to thank once again uh, to Joanne and Kian who took time from their very busy lives and uh, they got up very early. And thank you so much for sharing your insights. That, that means a lot and gives uh, a nice kind of like uh, insights to students that are planning to, to join us uh, to this in this uh, journey as well so uh, um, much, and that means a lot so just uh, as a reminder we are looking forward to seeing you and i'm just going to put here just our contact details please do feel free to get in contact with us you have professor joe bog here ronan and myself our email address is here and also if you scan the code it's going to take you directly to the msc fbi uh, the website and again application all of the details about the applications are there and uh, there's also going to be soon information about the Glanbia Excellence Scholarship so I'm going to invite uh, Joe just to conclude this webinar and again thank you so much uh, Kian and Joanna uh, for joining us today. Yeah I, I don't have much more to say I think when you said getting up early I think that was Kian in, in Sydney I think you're probably it's later in Sydney is it? 12 o'clock at night. <laughs> okay, so let's get, well, unless it's, if it's after 12, maybe it's early in the morning. Mm -hmm. But anyway, just to thank Joanne and Kean, uh, great representatives of the programme. And again, give a very honest account, which I think is really important because 
you know, students want to hear that. Um, thanks to my colleagues, Ronan and Lana, for uh, their input. Uh, again, I think, as I say, we, we have a great program. Uh, if people are interested, they can contact us. Uh, and as I say, it's something we've designed with the student in mind and industry in mind and uh, great opportunities from it. So uh, I think it really focuses on the academic side, but also I think key in hitting that well, the the, the rounded student and, you know, the, the gym and everything like that, you have all that part of it on a nice campus in a, a fun, challenging teaching environment. Okay, thank you very much to everybody and uh, stay safe, everybody.